Welcome to your quick 10 minute flow state talk break. Can you think back to a moment at work when you were in flow, when you were in the zone? Notice how on those days, quitting is not on your mind. And in fact, you love your job. But then there are those days or even weeks full of meetings, Slack channels blowing up, working in the evenings and weekends, where it feels like regardless of the hours put in, nothing gets done. It's those weeks when I feel like quitting completely. Here's me talking about my experience founding a startup and what I learned when I quit. Last year, I had left a startup that I had co-founded with two friends. I left because I was miserable. I was unhappy and I realized the only reason I was doing it was because I thought it was the thing to do. There's more to it, but I want to focus on one of the reasons I was unhappy, which was a lack of focus, flow, or deep work time. Here's how a typical day would go for me back then. I'd wake up, I would check Slack and email for urgent messages. Once I dealt with that, I'd go back to coding. And then I'd get interrupted by Slack. And then I'd get back to coding. And then I'd be interrupted by Slack or a meeting. And then I'd go back to coding. This would go on for the entire day. Finally, in the evening, I'd have some undistracted time to code. But many evenings, I was too tired. I'd eventually just burn out. This type of day would go on for six, sometimes seven days a week. Because that's what you do at a startup, right? While it's obvious to me now why I was unhappy, back then I thought something was wrong with me. I thought I just wasn't cut for this type of endeavor. But even worse, I started to believe I was not a good software engineer. So finally, I worked up the courage to leave the startup. It was scary to leave because I had no idea what I would do next. But I took the plunge. I left the startup, and for a few months, I had no work. While I did dive more into my music, something very interesting started to happen. I started to code on my own again. I started to build little projects or websites, and I absolutely loved it. It was a surprise to me because I seriously got to a point where I thought I was not only bad at coding, but that I hated it. But now, with all the free time, no distractions, I could actually get into a zone and build something. Around this time is also when I started producing this podcast. All that uninterrupted, deep work time led to one of my most successful creative endeavors but it also made me fall back in love with coding. I want to take this moment to reread one of my favorite points from the book, Stealing Fire. In flow, six powerful neurotransmitters, norepinephrine, dopamine, endorphins, serotonin, and dandamide, and oxytocin come online in varying sequences and concentrations. They are the six most pleasurable chemicals the brain can produce. The experience lifts the course of life to another level. Enjoyment replaces boredom. Helplessness turns into a feeling of control. When experience is intrinsically rewarding, life is justified. Again, when experience is intrinsically rewarding, life is justified. As I reflect on the difference flow and deep work created for my relationship to coding, I realized this. When I was at the startup, or prior to that, at a big tech company, most of the time I was questioning whether or not I was on the right path, whether I should try to leave and do something else. But there were those few rare days when I had no meetings, the slack was quiet, and I got into a deep state of flow. On those days, I definitely wasn't questioning what I was doing with my life. And so this leads me to today, where instead of questioning what I'm doing, I focus on how I'm doing it. I focus on creating an environment 
in which I can experience as much flow as often as possible. Because when I'm in flow, not only is the experience itself rewarding, but I'm also producing my best results. It's literally a win-win. Better experience, better outcome. Well, that's easy to do when you're working alone. How do you maintain deep work when you're working with other people? When you're in a company, you have to collaborate. You have to communicate. While this is true, I believe the way you communicate can contribute to deep work and flow. To be honest, it wasn't really the startup's fault. I mean, I co-founded it. So whose fault was it really? I would put the blame on myself because I didn't have the awareness that the way I was working was ineffective and therefore I didn't create the deep work environment I needed. Today, I'm fortunate to work at a company that cares and teaches us about deep work. The CEO himself has created guidelines on how we communicate. For example, we only meet once a week. We also encourage everyone to respond on Slack only when convenient for them, preferably outside of their deep work session. So what happens when something urgent needs to be discussed? Well, of course, we have that meeting, but the important piece here is that it's considered the exception, not the rule. So if something comes up that isn't urgent, that's not a blocker, simply take a note of it and bring it up on the next weekly meeting. What this allows is everyone to continue in their deep work session uninterrupted. With this setup, we're essentially prioritizing deep work over all non-urgent communication. While this sounds great, I know many of you are probably at organizations that don't have these guidelines around communication, that don't seem to care about deep work. Well, I believe no matter what company you're at, they probably do care about your productivity, about the results you're producing. So how can you work with your colleagues and your manager to create an environment that you love working in, an environment conducive to deep work and flow? I truly believe it starts with communication and trust. Let's talk through some examples. Here's a tweet from Fiona, a designer at Dropbox. My boss supported me in swapping working on Sunday and taking Wednesday off. Quiet focus and flow time today, less lines for skiing on Wednesday. To me, this is a great example of communication and trust between a manager and employee. I have another friend who, working as a manager at NVIDIA, convinced her team to stop having their daily update meetings for two weeks. It was an experiment to see if they actually needed that meeting. They quickly found out that not only was the meeting unnecessary, but without it, they were all more productive and much happier as a team. These are just two examples in which coworkers decided to change their communication patterns in hopes of improving the way they work. I believe that most organizations are unconsciously driven into these unhealthy communication patterns. What it takes to fix this is first awareness. And I hope this podcast and this episode has helped with that. The next step is taking the initiative and putting in the effort to communicate and build a sense of trust that can be a foundation for deep work and flow. So how is your organization set up? Could you improve the way you communicate? something to reflect on. And that's it for this flow state talk break. What would you like to do next? Do you want to jump back into work with either a 30 or 60 minute session? Do you want to take a break with some ambient nature sounds? Or do you want to listen to another talk break? Choose the video that best suits your mood right now.